Um, they have their day in court. They don't have to leave when they're given a notice. You usually have a date that says you have to be out by then. If you're not out by then, they take you to court. You have your day in court and you're allowed to put your case to the, to, to the court. It depends on the type of tenancy you have as to how secure or not you'll be when you're in court. Um, as somebody who represents people in court quite a lot, you can get good results in court, but to be quite honest, you can also get some bad results in court. And the reality is, if you face with eviction, you shouldn't ignore that, you should try and seek legal help or whatever, despite the fact that this government is cutting legal aid and all that kind of stuff. You should seek legal help, you should always go, but even with an, a, a court granting an eviction order as a socialist and with a campaign behind you, the court only can get its two or three bailiffs to turn up at the door and try and evict somebody. If they're met by five, six, seven, ten, fifteen, twenty campaigners, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Well, the police might be called, but it's not a criminal act, it's a civil action. Actually, you say to police, it's none of your business. And so a campaign like this, potentially, both locally and nationally, could prevent those kind of evictions. Just on, I just wanted to just touch on some of the campaign, wider campaign slogans. I think Sarah brought up a fantastic idea, which is we should demand the council have uh, create a council renting agency. They're not prepared to build housing, let's put the pressure on them. Let's say, well, compulsory purchase these vacant properties, and there are plenty of them, whichever borough you're in, compulsory <coughs> purchase them, and then rent them on fair rents. Or better still, if we can see an empty property, let's squat it. Okay, there's problems with the squatting laws, but nonetheless, as an action to highlight the fact that there's vacant properties, Let's squat them. Let's say a family could be here if this council could compulsory purchase this. I think the point that Jim made about block uh, represented wherever, fantastic. And the point that Bob made about standing in elections, absolutely. From this campaign, what's to stop us two, three, as we build the campaign, two or three representatives of this campaign standing in elections? We might not win. The chances are we won't because people are still not breaking up. Either they're abstaining or not breaking from their official parties or just not on the electoral register anymore, which a lot of people don't go on because they've just given up hope. But what a fright it would be for some of these careerist politicians to have local activists with a campaign that backs them saying, we're going to actually take your seat from you. And by the way, local councillors get approximately £8,000 allowance every year. That's just the ones who don't do anything. The cabinet members get a lot more. £8,000 probably sorts them out for their holidays. So let's put the living fear on them when it comes to uh, the, 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 uh, the, the elections. The, um, the, other, the other thing that worries me is local authorities have the right to provide temporary accommodation at the, uh, at the, prior to this new regulation anywhere in London. You would look here if you're providing the temporary accommodation outside of Brent, for instance. Uh, or in Brent, but if you're outside of Brent, that's not unreasonable as a legal point, it's not unreasonable. But, you know, as the Liverpool councillor says, sometimes it's better to break the law than to break the poor, and therefore you can campaign to councillors to say, well, actually, being housed in Ealing, this temporary accommodation is wrong. The fact that they've now got the right to how to put you in temporary accommodation somewhere else in the country, and in fact what they're going to do, what local councillors are going to do, is when they discharge their duty to homeless people, they can discharge their duty in the privately rented sector outside of London. And that's an absolute scandal. Yes, it can be challenged legally, but there's only so much we can do. If, if anything, we can't do anything. I'm a socialist, I'm a revolutionary. I understand the law is an act, we can use it when we can. But ultimately, it's campaigns that bring local representatives to account. And that's the most important thing. I'll just um, finish on uh, one one final point, and I think that's right what Keith said, is um, there is different strata of the working class. There are people who are doing really well. Um, you know, let's not kid ourselves, we've got mortgages, who've got decent jobs. But the reality is now, I think the penny starts to drop even amongst that layer, is job security is going. And if we raise the fact that the safety net is going as well, even people who are and you're quite right to point it out as well. Even people who are relatively comfortable will give support to this kind of campaign because they understand either it's going to affect me 
or it's going to affect my family, or in fact it is affecting my family. So we shouldn't be afraid about saying, you know, these are about benefits, because we've got to remember the point is, in London, the majority of people who claim housing benefit are in work. Are actually in work. People who claim child tax credit and work.